We are ready to get started. We're gonna actually look in the search analysis tool now, and we're going to begin doing the ideation process. I wanna walk you through the how we're going to apply what we've learned about the inverted pyramid into here. First of all, open up your search analysis tool, and we're gonna start applying some of the core fundamentals that we've learned already, and we'll pick a few others up as we go. So let's say we're making a website about horses. So the first thing I want to do before I do anything, no partial searches, nothing, before I do anything else, I wanna think about the base of that inverted pyramid. What are those obvious questions that somebody is going to type in about horses? Because those are almost always going to be the highest trafficked articles because everybody is going to search them. So something like, horse cost, prettiest horse breeds, etc. I'm going to type all of those base queries in here. So it's okay if you didn't pick the exact same questions, but most of us, we're gonna be pretty close on one of those major base queries, those top, those base of the pyramid kind of things. Now, once we've entered those in, we're going to start actually getting to work using our partial search method. And we're going to fill this up with a bunch more ideas. As we do that, we're going to kind of keep in mind where that fits on the pyramid, and we're looking for patterns of when we start seeing something appearing a lot of different times. It comes up in a few people also ask when we're doing the partial search method. It may also come up in some autocompletes as we're, uh, as we're doing those partial searches that we may see something alphabet soup, etc. even though that's not our primary technique. We're looking for those patterns. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add a whole bunch more that I'm finding as I do this. And all I'm doing is I'm gonna say, our horses, and I'm gonna type in enter. I'm, there's no people also ask on this, but there are related searches here. Are horses like dogs? Now this one, I'm gonna actually skip because I'm not really sure what people are looking for. Are they like dogs? Is it as hard to take care of as a dog, etc.? I would be careful about being, um, to just precisely matching a, a search because sometimes you can't understand their searcher intent. We're just gonna miss that. Where are horses indigenous to? Like where did horses originally come from? That could be interesting. Now I'm gonna do can horses, and I'm gonna at least look at these auto autocompletes. Ooh, can they swim, eat peanut, okay, a lot of can they eat this, that, or the other. Okay, so I'm gonna type can horses. Can horse poop make you sick? Um, could be interesting, people are, can horse poop make you sick? Maybe people are smelling it and not sure uh, about it. Hopefully they're not eating it. Can horses eat? We're gonna kind of follow up on one that we saw. Um, what can horses eat list? List of what horses can eat. Okay, then. So now we've seen on this page, we see that can horses eat is a good list, a good thing, but we're not sure what exactly, it didn't give us in the people also ask a lot of those um, types of foods that people are mostly searching. So I'm gonna use autocomplete in kind of conjunction with that. Can horses eat? and we see bananas, oranges, strawberries, broccoli, pumpkin, etc. So now we're going to have a choice, and this is one we're gonna take on a little bit later, is where do we take a bunch of queries and group them together into one post, and where do we write a separate article on bananas, oranges, strawberries, etc. And to me, that real question comes down to competition. If there's significant competition for each one of them, we probably want to write about them separately. If 
it's mostly people want to know, hey, what can I feed my horse? Then we're going to mostly tie them together. It's also possible to hybridize that and do one big article of list of everything horses can eat and then just take a few of the big ones and write those separately. Okay, so next we have how much does a horse and autocomplete says way, cost, cost per month. That's interesting. But we'll go ahead and, and search this. And the people also ask, it says, how much does a horse cost per month? I really like that one. How much does a horse cost UK? I think that's excellent. How much does it cost to buy and keep a horse? See, they're just looking for the general everything. Uh, so you can see kind of where everybody's at different stages. How much does it cost to buy and keep a horse in the UK? We're going to look at the related questions. Oh, and now we see one for Canada as well. That could be interesting. Now, I'm not just going to take horse, I'm also going to take aspects of the niche. Now, a lot of new horse buyers think they want a very young horse, right? Just like you would get a young puppy. Uh, when you get a dog, most people want a puppy. When you get a horse, a lot of people think they want a pony. Um, and so we're going to do much of this same process. We're gonna go through all of these. I mean, we have so many partial questions, and this time we're gonna insert pony. And so we might type, is a pony, And we see what is a pony versus horse? People aren't even sure what, what a pony is. Is a pony a different species than a horse? Is a pony a baby horse? Does a pony grow into a horse? Now all of these, they're essentially asking the same question, right? And so we could take one of these weeks and write one killer article on that because when we're seeing five people also asks that people are not sure about this, this is a very important post. And you think about that inverted pyramid, this is a base topic. I like to see people do a lot of ideation right at the beginning. Go, go pretty far with it because when you come back to ideation later, it's gonna be a lot harder because you won't remember what you've already typed in, what you haven't typed in, etc. And so if you can just go through and get a whole bunch right at the beginning, it's probably going to be worth your while. We're going to validate them later, but what I don't want you to do is just fire hose the ideation. Don't just grab every single thing and people also ask everything in related questions, everything in autocomplete. If you do that, you're going to create a nightmare for you and your list is going to be so huge that you're going to get lazy as you go. If you're starting your website and you're writing your first batch of maybe 30 articles, and we're doing the search analysis for that, maybe we want to see ideation in the neighborhood of 125, something like that, that we're going to be able to whittle down to the very best 30 uh, to, to write about. So be careful in your search analysis. We don't want to go too crazy, but also it is helpful to do all in one sitting, have a bunch so that you know where you're at.